Hey, what's happening everyone on the internet, YouTube? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I know I am. If you're having a bad day, I would once again like to remind you that the feeling will pass and you'll start feeling better soon. Just give it some time. Anyway, today we're going to talk about substrate. I've done a lot of experimenting with several different types of substrates and what what lasts the longest, what provides the most, you know, nutritional value to your plants. Um, I've, I've done a lot of experimenting with like Aquion um, aquatic soil, uh, Fluval Stratum, which is great. It's just really hard to plant into. Um, I, yeah, I've done pebbles, you know, gravel, and you have to use root tabs and all of this stuff. And I wanted to, I wanted to finally find a way where I could have a nutrient-based uh, substrate that's going to last and I don't have to deal with swapping it out like uh, fluval stratum lasts about a year and you got to scoop it all out replant everything and then essentially rescape your whole tank in the same way with um, people who use organic soils they just use organic soil which you do get massive growth out of that um, but that doesn't last very long either um, the nutrient value of that will last anywhere from a year maybe two, depending on how heavily you plant it. But uh, through a lot of experiments and seven different types of aquascapes I've done, doing different types of substrates and com combining different kinds, until I found something that I found would last. And yes, I have three different uh, items I'm going to show you. And I have already experimented with it to see the results and the lasting effects of it. And it is going to be not only the most nutritional way to do your substrate, but it's going to last. So we're going to go in order. The first thing is, yes, even though I just said organic potting soil doesn't last very long, that's what I've got here. This is by miracle Grow. Um, always check the guaranteed analysis, which is, you know, at the bottom. I'm not going to zoom in on that, but what's important to me in an organic soil is nitrogen, phosphates, and potassium. Those three elements are extremely important when it comes to plants. Uh, uh, ammonia is great too, which will naturally happen uh, from your fish, you know, when they poop and whatnot. Uh, but those three things are, are essential, and you'll find most of that in your organic uh, soil. So, but the problem is, is that it it leaches soil is extremely dirty i've done just straight soil and yeah it turns your water brown and anytime you if a plant does completely die and you got to pull it out then you've just got soil and dirt everywhere and you can cap it with like a bunch of pebbles or gravel but those hold zero value whatsoever as well so eventually over time your soil is slowly going to dissolve and disintegrate and eventually disappear until you have nothing left but a bunch of gravel and pebbles. And then you're right back to having to put root tabs in there to feed your heavy root feeders. So, I, uh, what I have done now, what I've found that works the best for me, and I think it could benefit all of you beginners who, who are probably like what I did on YouTube all day just scrolling through subst substrate material from so many YouTubers and everyone has opinions, but I did all the science and the math and what I know will work now. After testing everything, I found a combination that works. So first, the bottom layer, about an inch of the organic soil. Now, like I said, it's gonna go away over time. Now, to save that nutrients, what I have here, is uh, cecium fluorite. Now this is the red. Now this is an inert substrate. It's made out of clay. Um, it doesn't really hold uh, very many nutrients at all. The red clay in particular has a lot of iron, which is great. But the main purpose of fluorite, which is popular by uh, cecium, is that it doesn't provide a lot of nutrients to your plants. What it does is it's it acts like a sponge. So what, what it'll do over time is as your uh, fish or shrimp or whatever animals you have 
um, you know, produce waste, that gets into the substrate and over time it starts to absorb into the fluorite and it'll hold on to it and retain it, therefore uh, making it nutrient rich. Okay, so um, if that makes any sense to you at all, because when you first put it in, it's not going to do anything for your plants. You're going to need uh, root tabs and it will absorb some of the nutrients from the root tabs, but you'll still have to keep replacing it. Uh, so my first layer, about an inch of organic soil that has uh, nitrogen, phosphates, potassium. Now the fluorite, you don't ever have to replace it because it's inert. It doesn't dissolve. And the fact that I know that what its purpose is, is to absorb nutrients and hold it and over time, then start to provide those nutrients to your plants. So what I'm gonna do, uh, so what I've done in another tank is I put this on top of my organic soil. So as the organic soil is slowly leaching all of its nitrogen and potassium and phosphates, it's gonna go directly into the fluoride. Uh, which will uh, become stable inside of this clay and hold on to it indefinitely. Okay. Um, now, this is hard to plant, plant stuff into in itself um, also. So what I'm going to put on top of this... Oh, let me pick this up. All right. This is black blasting sand. Okay, now all of these products are really cheap. Um, although the floor art was uh, donated to me, uh, I believe you can buy, uh, what is this, a 15 pound bag for like, you know, 16 bucks or whatever. If you do buy that, that'll be the most expensive thing if you go the route that I'm teaching. Um, but as far as the or organic soil goes, I mean, I, I got this over 30 pounds of this for like five dollars i just went to my local um hardware store and i bought it there and then the black blasting sand was 6.99 for 50 pounds of it uh so i mean if we do the math on all of this we're talking about 25 dollars um you know and like uh fluval just a four pound bag of fluval substrate is gonna cost you $25. And that won't even cover a 10 gallon tank. That, that'll that cover a five gallon tank, you know, so, um, and like the Aquion soils, I've used those too. Those lose all of their nutrients as well. And any of these aquatic soils, eventually after six months to a year, if you have a lot of heavy root feeders like Amazon Swords and Crips and stuff like that, they're going to just suck all that nutrient sound. It's going to be gone for good. Um, so the black blasting sand, that is going to be my final cap. That's going to hold everything underneath it and stop everything from essentially leaching and then dissolving into your water column. And every time you do a water change, you're just slowly removing everything. <coughs> so because I know that this is going to retain all of those nutrients. This is what will be in the middle. So as the organic soil starts to lose its value and dissolve and disintegrate over time, eventually what will be left is my inert clay substrate that is uh, loaded with iron. And uh, I, so sorry about the camera constantly uh, dropping. I'm using my phone and it's being held up. I'm not gonna explain that to you. I'm just having a hard time with the phone. Anyway, like I said, this never has to be replaced. It will absorb everything that the organic soil is providing, retain it, hold on to it for good. And then the blasting sand, as I mentioned before, that's going to be my cap. Uh, blasting sand, uh, I've used it several times. It's really great at um, holding your plants down and preventing any leaching of nutrients up into the water column. So if you have any plants that are uh, rhizome um, plants like a Nubius and Java fern that don't grab nutrients from soil um, directly, and, uh, then you, you may want some liquid fertilizers that you can squirt in there every now and again. But if you let some fish 
kind of thrive in there for a couple of weeks, they will be dumping their ammonia that will then feed your rhizome plants naturally on their own also. But I wanted to create a stable substrate that'll last for good, not cause me to have to replace it. And uh, through trial and error and many different tanks of everything, I mean, even back here, this, this one, I experimented with Aquion and play sand. That didn't work out so well. The play sand is heavier than the substrate and sunk to the bottom, and my nutrient substrate rose to the top anyway. So, <laughs> you know, that was a waste. You need to find sand. And um, I, I just like the color of blasting sand. You can also buy uh, pool filter sand, which is really cheap also. Uh, under 10 bucks, you can get 50 pounds of that, but a lot of that is white. But the crystal black blasting sand is a really nice look. And it'll make all the colors of your green plants and uh, colorful fish or shrimp really pop. You know, and uh, as I said, it will hold all the nutrients and everything below it. And allow the fluorite, which is a clay, to strictly absorb everything that the organic soil is going to lose over time. And um, uh, the sand, like I said, that's not going to dissolve either. That's going to stay there indefinitely for good. Um, and so let's talk about how much. So for the organic soil, I will be putting uh, about one inch. Uh, a, a, a lot of people think when they first do their plant to tank, oh, I'm going to put three inches of fluval stratum in there, and that's going to be awesome, and my plants are going to do great. Well, no. Because you're putting way too much, at that point you're putting way too much nutrients in your tank. And you're going to overload your plants and they're going to start dying. And yes, I've experienced this too. In my first tank I put nearly three inches of just fluval stratum. And everything started dying because, well first off, your plants have to transition. You know, and then when they all, all their leaves start to die and grow new ones, it's getting way too much nutrients and nothing to give it to. So then it's going to start killing the roots. And I've watched that happen. So then on my next tank, I used even less fluval stratum. And that did great. Uh, that's what I did in this tank here, which has been very successful. But because of what I learned before, I knew I needed much less stratum and, and uh, heavily plant it, you know, like every square inch of it. So this nutrients has somewhere to go than just dissolving in my water column. So I learned from that too, but I also know eventually that's going to uh, go away. And, uh, you know, I'm just going to hold this phone. Forget all this uh, leaning it up against. It's literally leaning against a toolbox. That's going to have to be replaced too. And I know in like a year, I'm going to have to look at this beautiful setup. That I'm going to have to pull everything out, stress out all the fish, put them somewhere else and redo all of that. And, you know, in a year and I don't want to have to go through that you know I want something that's going to last um, and through trial and error this has been the answer um, so I hope you I hope you found this helpful I, I, I really do because um, I you know I, I started off as a beginner making videos and through trial and error when I found the correct way started making the videos and then made my channel and, and then when I was secure and confident in what works, then I make the videos and share them with you all. So I know I'm not giving you information that's going to steer you in the wrong direction of being a beginner aquascaper. Um, you know, so th that's my goal. Uh, anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you did, you know, hit the like, hit the subscribe button, um, hit the notification bell. So you don't miss any upcoming videos. I do two a week. They're all geared towards beginners. But even experts can learn something uh, from my teachings as well. Which are mostly geared towards plants. But now that I've done all the research I can possibly do. And experimented with every type of uh, organic soil. Aquarium soil. Gravel and all of that. I have found what I believe that has worked best for me. And I know it can be helpful for you. To use the combination of these three products, and just these three alone, are going to cost cheap. Are going to be cheaper 
for nearly 100 pounds worth of substrate than anything that you will find on the market that's specifically made as aquarium soil. So essentially, I'm teaching you how to make a good aquarium soil on your own. Um, and just so you know, I'm a little upset with Home Depot. I went to Home Depot first for blasting sand. Uh, you know, it's a home improvement place. I go in there. I went into the section where they sell sand blasters. They even rent sand blasters. I couldn't find any sand blasting sand to put in them. So then I, you know, got an employee and I was like, hey, man. Where's the sandblasting sand for the sandblasters that you're selling? Oh, we don't carry that product. Weird, man. That's like you guys selling vacuums without cords. And I got to go somewhere else to buy a cord for my vacuum cleaner. So they were useless. That might not be the same case at all Home, du Home Depots, but it was the case here in Minnesota. I ended up going to a Menards and I found blasting sand there. And like I said, it was uh, $7.99, 8 bucks plus tax for 50 pounds of it. So well worth it. Uh, yes, this video um, is, you know, long, but it's worth it. Well, you know, some of my videos normally last around 10 minutes, but there's a reason. And that's because I'm describing things in full detail. And some of the stuff takes some time to explain. And uh, also, I am I can be a bit awkward and pause, and I'll lose thought of what it is I'm trying to teach. Have some patience. Stick with me. I'll get my point across. It works. All right. Uh, thanks again for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day. And if you're not, do something to improve it. Go out for a walk. Get yourself out of the dumps. Don't sit there depressed eating cookies all day. That's not going to help. All right. Thanks again. We'll uh, see you in the future. This is going to be using this empty tank here. Uh, so I'm going to be start, I'm going to start aquascaping that too. And with all the plants that I'll be putting in there, videos for each one, um, and showing what the substrate looks like with these three components, um, put together and one by one, each plant I do show you how to treat it, take care of it. I, st everything I started, I started with plants and teaching you how to plant them in there, acclimatizing them, how long it'll take, etc. You know, if, you, if you've been following me for a while, you already know what I do, but I do have some new subscribers. So scroll through some old videos. You know, if you if you purchase some plants, you, you'll probably find a description of it somewhere uh, on my channel. Um, anyway, have a great day. Thanks again.